passion for justice and love, and I, I really want to commend you and that thank you so much for sharing that. So the, the next question I had for you, first of all, a lot of our audience, the Hope Heads, may or may not know that you have several albums. You have several recording albums, and I just wanted to say congratulations oh, you know, for, for your indeed. last recording that uh, I've been listening to it nonstop for the last Oh, you week. got a little never forget what time <laughs> Never forget, quality. yes, a journey of revelation. Yes, never Scott forget. and KRS-1 and... You had Great everyone. Yeah, Prince. Prince. You had Andre 3000. Oh, Prince too. And yeah, that, that Dear, Dear Mr. Man is my favorite track off. Oh, there, with personally. Prince. Prince is, yeah, he's the fun, he's the purple one. I mean. Yeah, isn't that the truth? Isn't so, that so true? Let me just, ask with you. Him, just with him three weeks ago at his crib. Mm -hmm. I let myself talk to him for four hours. Oh, what? Uh, yeah, I know he's yeah. a man of God as well. Oh, no, yes. Lord, yes. He's a Jehovah Witness. Yeah, so he's definitely mm -hmm. dedicated his life to the kingdom. Absolutely. How did that, where did the impetus behind that record come from for the album Never Forget? Well, it actually came from Brother Mike Daly, uh, my brother in Sacramento, California, my blood mm. brother Cliff West, because as you know, this is our third album. We did yes. Sketches of Our Culture in right. 2001. Yeah, my favorite one off of that was Elevate Your View. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, and the 70, that 70 song. Uh, my mom likes the 70 song. <laughs> oh, that's so <laughs> nice. That's so nice. My brother wrote that one. Oh, God. Now, exactly. That's the one that got me a little trouble with Brother, brother Larry Summers. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, among other things. But yeah. uh, uh, but then we had street knowledge, and then now I'll never forget. But never forget is the one that has, of course, so many of the figures that we talked about: Killer Mike and Rod Digger and just, Black yeah, Thought, wonderful and Talib Khalil and others. It's just artists. a marvelous, marvelous collection. Now, in fact, we're going back into the studio with Nas and Big oh, Boy wow. and a whole host of others. Uh, oh wow! Uh, MC Light. We got a whole group, a whole crew I that's mean, going back into the studio. Doctor West, soon. even if I can like arrange the M and M's there in the room, let me just get down <laughs> somewhere. I can. I can arrange the blue M&M's for now. <laughs> Whatever, man. Let me know. Oh, you know? We're going to have a time. We're going to have, we, you know, I was just, I just finished the album, but um, Rhyme Fest. Oh, wow. With from Shot Town, yeah. Uh, the LJ uh, coming out. That, that was a wonderful thing. Same with Raheem running. Devon. Just finished thing Raheem Devon and Terrence Blanchard. Oh, wow. Going in the studio with Lot. Let us see uh, in the next couple of weeks. So Hidden Beach was definitely a, a wonderful move for you. Oh, yeah. yes. No doubt about it. it okay. Was, it, it, that's Brother Steve McKeever, you know, uh, with Jill Scott and Kendrick and the others yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. my dad loved Kendrick. <laughs> Shout oh, out to Kendrick James Hope, Rest in Power. <laughs> Kendrick, serious, serious. But I've been very blessed, though. But as you know, it's fundamentally about just trying to keep alive the educational legacy and you yes. can do it with a, with a dancing and a singing education well music well is such a, a wonderful format to, to help people memorize and to help people really catch on to things I think absolutely. music is one of the most effective ways to communicate the gospel absolutely and that's why hymns are so powerful why gospel songs are so powerful Negro spirituals oh, are so Lord, powerful yeah. Lord, and I think Lord, that like, yeah. you, like we talked about that tradition has to be fought for and it Absolutely. has to be earned. It has to be something where we continually are, are relating messages of agape love and justice to the people. There you go. So, there you go. I spent a lot of time now in prisons. Yes. We got a large number of the young brothers who are very sharp. Yes. But many of them just learn how to read. And so we use a lot of the, uh, you, the CDs and the books as the basis for education. And so, uh, you know, so never forget to put the CD in. They, they would have engaged in a dialogue for hours on that. You give them the voice and soul of the black folk, it's going to be tough to get through those paragraphs with that Victorian <laughs> high prose of that yes. genius from Great Barrington, Massachusetts. Amen. You know, so that you do want to promote literacy in terms of words, but you also acknowledge the literacy in terms of um, sound, silence between sounds. So let me ask you about this. Now, from your work in hip-hop music, I can see that your view of hip-hop culture is one of that you, you feel that hip-hop is a relevant, life-affirming enterprise in resistance and hope. So in your own prophetic voice, where do you, where do you see hip-hop culture going from here, 2009 and beyond, Dr. West? Well, it's a good question. It depends on uh, who it is. Um, mm. On Friday, I'm going to be with Lupe Fiasco at yeah. uh, Grand, Grand Rapids, Michigan, at Calvin College. Lupe. We're doing a beautiful thing Touché, together. Touche, Lupe. Touche, Lupe. <laughs> The cool, the cool, uh, uh, serious, serious Chicago Muslim brother. Yes, lyrical yes. genius in his own he right. Is, he is. Uh, uh, but if it follows Lupe, that's one thing. Uh, but the important is we had to make space for the Lupe fiascos mm. and for the progressive prophetic hip hop. Yes. Folks, see, hip hop is not the kind of thing that people just uh, have again some 
spectator-like attitude. Hip-hop yes. is a world in which mm. people live. Now, not everybody. My mother don't live in the hip-hop nation. Mine either. <laughs> but exactly. But for so many young brothers and sisters around the world, I was just in Japan where they had a long discussion. I was there last year. Is that right? Yeah, Tokyo. Oh, yeah. The beautiful. Black Music Magazine, they had a long interview. They with, love you know, rap music. Actually, the Japanese market, I think, is the second highest selling rap market in the world oh, absolutely. besides Germany. People don't absolutely. know that. And and, and the BMR, the, the the magazine that yes. they have is what is better than most American magazines when it comes to black music. It's just unbelievable. Yes. I, I was in their offices in Tokyo. It's just unbelievable. And, but what, what what I'm saying that young people all around the world live in a world where they inhabit hip hop mm. music is is being part of the hip hop nation. So in that nation of course you're gonna find good, bad excellent, mediocre, poor, and so forth. Because inside any world, you're going to have a variety of different streams and strands and tendencies. So the question is to be inside of that world and to accent the best tendencies, the prophetic and the and the progressive, but also the most artistically exploratory. See, Kanye West is artistically exploratory. Yes. He's embracing. Same is true with Niles Barley. There's mm-hmm. a host of others who are trying to transgress the way the way Miles Davis was connecting with Jimi Hendrix before yes. Jimi Hendrix died. You see yes. what I mean? trying to explore on and on, not losing sight of the roots, R-O-O-T-S, but also knowing there's no R-O-U-T-E-S, the <laughs> yes, routes. Routes, exactly. That one can travel without building on the roots, but the roots become parochial if you're not willing to explore the various routes. Yes. And so, you know, hip-hop, like any other world, has a lot of good, bad, and the ugly, it's got some powerful stuff, it's got some petty stuff. It, 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 it's what any other world is. Hope heads, you're listening to the WHRB 95.3 FM. It's your boy DJ Hip Hope in the place to be, 95.3 FM, with Dr. Cornell West. One, I had one question for you. What is an interesting trivial fact, Dr. West, that most people might not know about you? Like, we all, like, I, at least I know that you taught at, taught at Union Theological Seminary. You taught at Yale. Harvard, right here in the Crimson City. <laughs> oh, Lord, I had blessed, uh, blessed uni- years at Harvard. University of Paris. I'm gonna a get lot a- of good folk at Harvard. Oh, yes. Then and I, now. We're going to get into that. But um, so what is, what is like one thing that people might not know about you? I don't know, brother. Mm. Maybe, that, maybe they don't know that my name was Lil Ronnie until I was seven. Oh, wow. Mm. <laughs> so uh, also one thing I thought was interesting was that you have two bachelor's degree from Harvard, and you got that in three years. Well, no, I really only have one. Oh, really, okay. What happened was I was majoring in philosophy. I decided to graduate in three years. My chairman, John Rawls, told me I could not <laughs> do the junior colloquium and, and the senior colloquium the same year. They had to be sequential. Oh. So I had all of the courses requisite for concentration in philosophy, but mm. I couldn't m- major in philosophy. And I ended up, I had already taken all the courses requisite for a major in Near Eastern languages and literature, of Hebrew and Aramaic and Mesopotamian thought. And so I officially graduated in Near Eastern languages and literature. That's what it says on my degree, okay. because I wrote a thesis in that area. I had taken all the courses. Right. But my, my, my real degree, in a certain sense, was in philosophy. But I couldn't take that last senior colloquium. And so it really it's only one. I know Brother Tabas and the others from speaking agencies sometimes say it's two, but it's still officially only one. But it's yes. it's only two in the sense that I went on to graduate school in philosophy based on my courses in oh, philosophy. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, but I but my degree is in nearest in languages and literature. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Now, if you were to sum up your theology in one statement, how would you do so, Doctor West? I think it would be we must forge the courage to love our way through the darkness of the world. That it, it's a love-based, love-obsessed, love-preoccupied orientation, uh, which has to do, of course, with desire for being with, identifying, empathizing, being in solidarity with others. Uh, but it also requires a courage cause uh, and the love that I'm talking about could be love of wisdom in the mm. Socratic tradition, the okay. love of the life of the mind, the love of the world of ideas. It could be love of beauty in the tradition of a Shelley or Keats uh, in, 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 in English-speaking poetic uh, uh, history. Uh, so that love takes a number of different forms. Yes. Uh, 